Hello, my name is Dr. James Underberg. I'm a clinical assistant professor of medicine at the New York University School of Medicine and the NYU Center for Cardiovascular Disease Prevention. I'm also the director of the Bellevue Hospital Lipid Clinic in New York City. I'd like to welcome you to today's program, which has been designed to help you manage patients with elevated levels of low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, or LDLC, who are at increased risk for cardiovascular events. More than 70 million adults in the United States have elevated LDLC levels, a major risk factor for two leading causes of death, coronary heart disease and stroke. Epidemiologic studies have revealed strong associations between increasing serum cholesterol levels and the risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. This link between high LDLC levels and cardiovascular disease is supported by data from patients with familial hypercholesterolemia, a genetic disorder characterized by very high plasma concentrations of LDLC and the development of cardiovascular complications early in life. Conversely, patients carrying genetic polymorphisms that cause abnormally low levels of circulating LDLC have markedly low rates of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. It's important to remember that cholesterol is essential to our everyday physiology, serving as a component of cell membranes and a metabolic precursor of bile acids and other steroid molecules. Because cholesterol is insoluble in plasma on its own, it is transported as cargo in various types of lipoproteins. High levels of circulating cholesterol carried in apolipoprotein B-containing lipoproteins, such as LDL, are a key ingredient for atherosclerosis, the primary process underlying most coronary heart disease, strokes, and cardiovascular deaths. Atherogenic lipoproteins infiltrate arterial walls, where they are trapped and modified to induce the activation of inflammatory cascades and the formation of foam cells. The associated fatty streak causes smooth muscle cells to proliferate and a fibrous plaque to form. Maturation of the plaque induces additional inflammatory processes and platelet aggregation, which can lead to plaque instability, rupture, luminal thrombosis, and potentially obstructed arterial blood flow. Over the last two decades, the strong association between LDLC levels and cardiovascular disease, together with evidence for better outcomes when LDLC levels are reduced in patients with hypercholesterolemia, has led to increased prescribing of lipid lowering therapies. Various drug classes are available to target different processes in cholesterol homeostasis. Cholesterol levels are regulated by a variety of mechanisms, including a biosynthesis pathway in nucleated cells involving more than 15 enzymes, absorption from ingested food and the intestinal lumen, and hepatically mediated elimination in bile as free cholesterol or bile acids. The most frequently prescribed lipid-lowering medications, the statins, inhibit the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase which is thought to catalyze the rate-limiting step in cholesterol production. Other lipid-lowering drugs function by increasing fecal excretion of bile acids, inhibiting the absorption of cholesterol in the small intestine, decreasing the production of triglycerides and certain lipoprotein classes, or inducing lipoprotein lipolysis. Despite these options, substantial unmet needs still exist. For example, only a third of patients on therapy achieve their LDLC goals. Additionally, while statins have been directly associated with reduced risks for heart attack and stroke, treatment is often quickly discontinued after it is initiated. One large online patient survey found that almost 75% of new statin users stopped taking the prescribed drug within a year of initiation, most commonly because of side effects, such as muscle pain, weakness, or cognitive issues. On the other hand, for many of the non-statin agents, the observed effects on cardiovascular risk or mortality are less robust. One new strategy to reduce LDLC levels involves inhibiting the function of the protein PCSK9. This protein acts as a chaperone, binding to the LDL receptor LDL complex on the surface of hepatocytes 
before internalization into the cell. In the presence of PCSK9, the LDL receptor is not recycled back to the cell surface, but instead is degraded in the lysosome. Therefore, PCSK9 increases LDLC levels by reducing the number of LDL receptors on hepatocytes that are available to bind and clear LDL cholesterol from the circulation. A novel class of therapeutic antibodies, which currently includes alirocumab and evolocumab, has been designed to disrupt the binding between PCSK9 and the LDL receptor on the surface of hepatocytes. The PCSK9 inhibitors decrease the number of LDL receptors that are degraded. This change allows more receptors to recycle to the cell surface where they clear circulating LDL, resulting in marked decreases in plasma LDL cholesterol levels. I want to thank you for your time today, and I hope that you enjoy the remainder of the program.